This week on The Stampede, we shine the spotlight on SMU's Wrecking Ball. I'm not really a vocal leader. I'm more like of a show my leadership through my actions. We'll show you another side of star defensive end Margus Hunt. Hey, our back's against the wall right now, so you gotta play like it. And we'll go all access for the Mustangs matchup with UTEP. We'll throw deep down the middle of the field. Darius Johnson all alone at the 15. He'll walk in. Rolls to his right. Taylor Reed has it from behind at the 42 yard line. Call him Tank or T Reed. Just call him the tackling machine. Third down and less than a yard. And they're not going to get it. Stopped right at the line of scrimmage by Taylor Reed. I didn't play linebacker growing up, but you know, I played running back. I was on the other side of the ball. Over the years, I've, I've learned to, to love this position, man. Linebacker is, you know, basically the man on defense. Taylor Reed, a six foot, 240 pound senior linebacker from Beaumont, led the Mustangs in tackles as a sophomore with 145, and again as a junior with 101. Taylor Reed is the, one of the most instinctive football players I've ever seen. Uh, he can sniff out plays before they happen. That's hard to coach, and every time the play starts, Taylor Reed ends up where the ball's at, so he's just one of those special players. He has made 201 solo tackles in his career, which ranks him second among active FBS players. Taylor's a very consistent player. He's going to make the plays, and you're, you count on him doing that, so when he makes plays, it's not as big of a deal. He's supposed to now. He's been doing it since a young age. I mean, he just plays as hard as uh, anybody that I've had. In fact, he reminds me of a guy that was all pro for us for many years in Atlanta, Jesse Tuggle. And, uh, you know, he's a little bigger than Jesse, probably uh, a little faster. And uh, he just plays football. On the field, his philosophy is simple. Seek and destroy. He's got the intensity. Uh, He's just got a lot of natural uh, knack for playing football, and, and he's got some nastiness about him. When he plays, he plays physical. It's not my personality at all, man. You, you ask anybody around here, man, I'm always smiling, I'm always laughing, just goofy. But it's just like when I put on that helmet, it's just a different person. It's like my, my alter ego. That's a hard position to play, you know, that middle linebacker role. Um, you, like I said, you gotta be vocal, you gotta move sideline to sideline. You know, he, he's around the ball, you know, almost literally every play. And so, you know, his job is very demanding, but he does an you know, uh, above exceptionally well job doing that. Reed's progression at SMU has been steady. He was named to the CUSA All-Freshman Team, followed by honorable mention honors as a sophomore, and All-CUSA Second Team as a junior. He's bought into our schemes and he does what we uh, ask him to do, and, and uh, he's become a very, very good football player. Four wide, Paul Hall from a shotgun. Here's a blitz. Taylor Reed sacks him all the way back to the 23-yard line. This year, Reed was named as a member of Dave Campbell's All-Texas College team, and he's on the watch list for the Lombardi Award. One, two, three, three, three. He's a great leader. Uh, the guys really respect him and look up to him, and you know he's having a great year so far. I'm not really a vocal leader. I'm more like of a, you know, show my leadership through my actions. Well, some guys get more praise than others, but I mean, Terry definitely doesn't let it get to him. He knows his job is to go out there and make plays on the field, and that's the only thing he can control, and that's the only thing he worries about. When he really wants to turn it on, that's when people, you know, really notice him because he can, he can lay a hit, he can take over a game on defense. But at the end of the day, it's all about wins and losses. The Mustangs stand at one and three. Defensively. You know, I feel like we've been doing better lately. You know, we you know we had some hiccups early on. You know, Baylor put it on us, and them ran all over us. But, you know, we came back. You know, SFA, and we also had feel like a strong game against TCU. I think they had like under 160 in total yards. So I mean, but that's that's not good enough. Conference play starts this week with UTEP, and Reed recognizes there's a lot of work still to be done. I feel like we're gonna get there. It's all it's all gonna start clicking. You know. And no better place to do it, you know, against uh, than against UTEP. You know, our first conference game on the road, so it's a big game for us. Reed has been in a bowl every year he's been on the hilltop. It's very important to him to leave SMU four for four. To have success, you know, I feel like we, I myself, and also we as a team, been having you know three straight 
through straight bowl games, you know, to be a part of something special that hasn't happened in a long time. Let's be y'all, let's be y'all. You can't like just check SMU off as a win. Like you actually have to have a game plan for us. You actually have to, you better practice or we would come here and, you know, we were surprised. You don't, don't sleep on us, don't sleep on SMU. Still ahead, a one of a kind music video. And the Mustangs travel to the Valley of the Sun. Take care of the football and get some takeaways. That's the formula for winning. Here's a Mustang blitz and a sack. Vargas Hunt. Paul Hall from a shotgun. Pressure Vargas Hunt with a sack for the far side. There are many who believe that Vargas Hunt has the talent to be a first round pick in the 2013 NFL Draft. And it's blocked by big Vargas Hunt. He's the best kick blocker in the country. And he has the potential to be a star in the pros at defensive end. But he's learned more than football during his time on the Hilltop. Well, I was with my... Uh academic advisor's office and we were trying to figure out my last class for the fall semester last year and uh, we were thinking about you know maybe guitar but it didn't fit my schedule so uh, she told me that okay how about piano I went in didn't know anything Literally, so started from scratch and it was fun. When I first heard Marcus could play the piano, I was like, nah, he's 6'8, six, 6'9, six, he's freaking out, he, he can't play the piano. He's actually really good. He actually catches a lot of people off guard. Like, if he's behind the closed door and he's playing, and somebody would mistake him for like an actual pianist instead of him being Marcus. relaxation method. It's when I, when I go and play and practice, it's, you know, I'm, on, I'm in there on my own and, you know, it feels really good to play. I think the first time I heard him was we were in Birmingham uh, getting ready for the bowl game against Pitt and they had a, they had a piano in the lobby. Marcus just gets after it and starts tickling the ivories and everyone's just turning around, who is this? And, and then we look over there and it's Marcus. And so uh, that was in January and he said he hadn't been playing too long and he was already uh, quite impressive in January. At the football field we have like you know, 10 thousands of people here and uh, over in the class we only had eight people and everyone's like looking at you like this and you know that kind of caught me off guard and uh, to be honest it was kind of not as prepared as I would have wanted to be for playing my final, but uh, I got through it and uh, it was good. In everything he does, man, he tries to be the best, and so it's pretty cool. It speaks to how talented and gifted and how he, like I said, how he works hard at anything he does. So it's just pretty impressive. I like to listen to a lot of piano music when I just, you know, walk around or even for pregame. It's just, you know, calm myself down and, uh, you know, get the mindset right for the game uh, or whatever I happen to do. So it's, uh, I found something really cool in, uh, in that experience. Hey, up, baby. Next up, the Mustangs open Conference USA play against Utah. Well, and it's intercepted. It's thrown to Garrett Davis. SMU begins its final season in CUSA with a contest in the Sun Bowl against UTEP. SMU is one and three, UTEP is one and four. Both teams played challenging non-conference schedules against schools from the Big 12 and SEC. The keys to the game for SMU are simple. Put the shoot back in the run and shoot offense and grab some takeaways on defense. Hey, 
Hey guys, listen up. Before Spike even say something, let me just say one thing. You can never teach want to. Want to you learn and you figure that out somewhere along in life, whether it's during college, whether it's in the high school, or what. I mean, there's a lot of stuff that I wanted to do that I never ever got to do. That's my fault because I didn't take care of business. This football team got a lot of want to that needs to be found. We need to find that thing tonight. We need to find that thing tonight so we can let those senior guys, man, get what they need to be and get their shots and let them have what they want. They are backs against the wall right now, so you gotta play like it, okay? We're one and three. We're in a bind right now. We gotta get the hell out of it, okay? We gotta throw punches, come out ready to go. Everyone clear on that? Everyone needs to bring their best individual effort, and we gotta play as a team. And no quit, man, for four quarters. All right, guys, listen up. Play together, out hustle them, take care of the football, and get some takeaways. That's the formula for winning. Here we go, Miners, here we go! Here we go, Miners, here we go! Stack left, 590, Texas. Down at nine. They run a stunt with some pressure for the right side. Gilbert steps up, throws. This one's behind his intended receiver as well. It's Derek Thompson. Just don't, just slide around, but keep your vision down the field as you slide around. Go through your one, two, three on the back side. They're, play, they're playing Tampa 2. The play fake held the middle linebacker, and nobody even went. Throw it away. Throw it away. Good job throwing it away. Good job throwing it away. Good job throwing it away. Hey, if you see on uh, on either Radford or I or Ripper, you went on a quick count on that first play, so you couldn't get out of it anyway. The key is when that guy walks down on the Y. Okay, Love and then he jumped outside of him. Yeah, baby. As the first quarter winds to a close, a 14-play, 64-yard drive carries to the UTEP two. Ball on the right hash. Garrett looking right. Oh, he had a man open, Darius Johnson. He rolls to his right. Now throws to Johnson in the end zone on the sideline. He's not in bounds. Why did he not throw it to him? What, what happened? No, no, just all you do is just look at him. If he's open, throw him the ball. Chase over his field goal gives SMU its first first quarter points of the season. In the second quarter, Garrett Gilbert starts to find a rhythm. Gilbert has time, delivers left side, it's caught, and I believe that's Jeremy Johnson again. Gilbert's starting to settle in, he's delivering some strikes. Gilbert, play action, will throw deep down the middle of the field. Darius Johnson all alone at the 15, he'll walk in. Touchdown, SMU. Touchdown, SMU. Don't get much easier than that. The nice play action fake throws a safety so much so that when Darius Johnson makes that catch about the 15 yard line, there's not an orange jersey within 15 yards and he walks in the end zone. Hey guys, the other thing is, when you're in there, you need to disguise. Then with less than two minutes to go in the half, SMU's defense makes a play and it's a big one. Taylor Reed steps up in the middle of the line. He'll come on a late blitz. They're setting up a screen, but it's being covered. Well, and it's intercepted. It's thrown to Garrett Davis. Going left to the 30, to the 20, to the 10. Touchdown, Garrett Davis. Woo! There you go, KD. I've been waiting for it for four years. He's run back a blocked field goal. He's run back fumbles. Finally, he gets the pick six. That's an all-state Crockett Bulldog running back. As soon as he gets his hands on the ball as a defensive player, he has that ability to go find the end zone. He throws the screen pass so poorly that Garrett Davis is able to get his hands on it and go the other way. You gotta go back. 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 You g
have had our opportunities, and uh, you know we wish that we made a few more plays on offense. But our defense is playing very good. They played very well all year. You know, the kids are playing hard, and we just got to keep it going. BC and uh, Gotchuk, they're uh, lining this guy up outside the box, but just be alert when those guys are flat that that guy's coming, right? So it includes you on the rows. If he says reach 24 or whatever the number is, that alerts you that he's, you know, that, that you got three-way bound up. On all third downs, except for the thirds, that was kind of a weird play, ran that one uh, 13 personnel and tried to pound that ball in us on third and four and we ran Sting into it and knocked it back. So uh, that was only the weird things that he's got off his chart on. But think P and 10 now, think play action pass. Okay? Anytime he pairs six and eight, he's working to that side. All right, so we want to make sure we get hard reroutes on six and eight, and you guys done a good job of that. We just got to make sure we lock out that backside. You know, the center and the, I'm worried about the end so flat, I don't think the tackle can get him you know, in the cutoff, but hopefully it'll get watered up with the center and the other guy. We'll give it a try, though. We'll give it a try. All right, guys, finish it now. Finish it. Four quarters all the way through. Enjoy the journey. Have fun, but finish the thing. Take care of the football. They can't beat us if they don't score. We know that for sure. Play with the same intensity defense. Make comp play with confidence offense. Let's finish it. Get to 1-0 in the conference. Let's go. Let's go. Still ahead, Margus Hunt adds to his records, and SMU's special teams make special plays. In the second half, Frank Gans's special teams come up big. Steven Valadez off of the right hash. It's blocked! Blocked right in the middle by the Mustangs. Taylor Reed picks it up, running left out of bounds at the 10. And I believe it's another one for you know who. Margus Hunt blocks another one for his career. That will give him 17, two off the national record. That's three this year, two field goals and a PAT for 92. Marcus Hunt's field goal block gives him 10 for his career, the most in NCAA history. Later in the third, UTEP coach Mike Price rolls the dice. 43-yard field goal for the UTEP Miners. They're going to run a fake. It's Carson Meager, the backup quarterback. He fires it downfield. Ball battled away. Shaquille Randolph with great coverage on the tight end. And again comes up without a score. We'll go switch corner on the backside, get the cover two. And then also, if you feel like, because the stub and wheel on the 4-1 are jumping like that inside on right. the quick drop, you can throw the screen to Randy and Larry. You know what I'm yeah. saying? Lost on the two high yes, yes, Okay. Woo! Let's go up, man! Gilbert, under some pressure from a blitz across the middle, caught Jeremy Johnson first down to the 40, running left to the 35. Garrett Gilbert finishes the game with 22 completions for 234 yards. If we got quick draw, those those outside backers are flying inside. So be alert, we're gonna throw the screen to you. The inside guy? Yeah, the inside guy came out to you. Okay, well on the other side, the other side he fired. It's a wheel, it's away from the back. It's away from the back. Darius Johnson pulls in five balls for 82 yards, and Jeremy Johnson makes a career high eight catches. So ends, you're up at the press, nose guard, get that guy running back, get extension on him so you can get him when he steps up. Okay, y'all with me on that? We're not running any games. Up and compress the guy. But this is a game that belongs to the defense. Identified that run up the middle, and he has stopped immediately. Let's go, defense! They hand it off to the tailback, and Taylor Reed with a big tackle for loss. Back to the 34-yard line. The Mustangs hold the Miners to just 13 first downs and 285 yards of total offense. Tracked down from behind by Ja'Garrett Davis. Did he come out hard on you? Oh, yeah. Huh? So they're trying to go up and kind of compress right there. Wait, wait. Hey, Pitt, then we probably just run it on Kevin's side first. Five-man rush for SMU. Taylor Reed with pressure. Taylor Reed with a sack back at the 14-yard line. The star of the game is linebacker Randall Joyner. Lots of time, Lamison across the middle. This one's intercepted, Randall Joyner, his second this year. He's running middle of the field at the 25, and he'll be tackled at the 27-yard line. Whose stat line boasts 14 tackles and a pair of picks. 
Good enough to earn him CUSA Defensive Player of the Week honors. He fires down the middle of the field, intercepted down at the 37 for the SMU Mustangs. The final score, SMU 17, UTEP nothing. Turn up, turn up, turn up. The Mustang defense has given up just three points in the last six quarters and has now posted a pair of shutouts for the first time since 1983. Man, I'm feeling good, man. Came out here and um, knocked down another barrier. You know, um, coach was telling us we haven't won here since 1994. So we came out here, it was a great team effort and uh, flying around the football and, um, you know, we were just out there making plays. I had a pretty good game, you know, it's credit to the D-line, you know, getting pressure, you know, and able to, for him to, you know, throw up uh, prayers and I was just out there to make uh, plays, you know. It's a total team game. I read the play, we seen the screen, and the quarterback overthrew it. I was just in the right place at the right time. I, I picked it off, I stepped back ready from my block, and did what came natural to me. The defense, of course, played uh, very solid. And getting the block kick again by Margus, I think it was a low kick, but still yet we blocked it, and uh, uh, that was all positive. I think we had a lot of yards and only 17 points to show for it, so we got to work on finishing our drives. You know, this is a must win for us, and uh, you know, it's a big time game, so we came out. We took care of business and we're looking to build off this. Where we want to go as a team um, depends upon you know, how we finish the conference. And we, uh, we've always had a goal to finish, you know, win conference. And uh, this is one step closer to doing that. This week, SMU travels to New Orleans for a noon kickoff with Tulane. The Ponies are looking to start 2-0 in CUSA play for the fourth consecutive year. SMU has four remaining home games. Houston on October 18th, the homecoming matchup with Memphis on October 27th, Southern Miss on November 20th, and Tulsa on November 24th. For tickets, call 214-SMU-GAME. That's 214-SMU-GAME. Or log on to smumustangs.com.